Welcome to this Autodesk Inventor Tech Tip for Constraint Limits. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'll be reviewing this tech tip with you today. Assembly constraints determine how components in an assembly fit together. As you apply constraints, you remove degrees of freedom, restricting the way components can move. Inventor 2011 allows you to assign maximum, minimum, and resting position values that specify the allowable range of motion for a constraint. In this tech tip, I'll be demonstrating the process of adding constraint limits to new and existing constraints. For the first part of this demonstration, I'll be focusing on this actuator and defining the allowable stroke motion. As you can see, I have a hard limit at the back of the cylinder and another limit where the linkage will collide. Using the measure command, I can determine the maximum allowable stroke for this design. Now I want to apply these limits to a constraint. We'll add the mate constraint as usual, selecting the opposite mating faces. Inventor 2011 has a new option available in the constraint dialog that allows users to define limits to constraints. You access the new option by clicking the More button at the lower right corner of the dialog. The constraint dialog will expand, exposing the new limit settings. You can determine a resting position and set a maximum and minimum limit for the constraint. The resting limit uses the current offset value to determine the default position. I'll enter the maximum limit I measured earlier and leave the minimum value at zero. I'll click OK to apply the new constraint. As we drag the arm and test the constraint, you'll see the limits restricting the motion of the components. A constraint with limits is identified in the browser by a plus and minus symbol at the end of a constraint. Veteran Inventor users might ask why we just don't use the contact-sensitive approach. Contact sets require physical contact with other components to determine the limits. Constraint limits use assigned values to limit movement and do not require physical contact. Remember, we wanted to create limits based on avoiding contact. Constraint limits also use far less computer resources to accomplish this design task. It's very easy to establish multiple constraint limits and create complex motion simulations. The next task in our demonstration is to limit the rotation angle of the chassis. I want to limit the rotation to 60 degrees on each side of zero. I already have an angle constraint locking the position of the chassis. To add a limit, I simply expand the More option and input the desired limitations. I will use the current angle value to determine the resting position. After applying the constraint, I'll rotate the chassis and observe the limits I set. If I release the chassis, it snaps back to the resting position. The new constraint limits option greatly enhances the existing inventor constraint workflow. Applying constraint limits based on a known or measured value is a very handy improvement. Constraint limits also require far less computer resources allowing designers to create larger and more complex assembly simulations. Thanks for taking the time to review this Inventor Tech Tip provided by Avatech Solutions. Additional tech tips are available at avatechsolutions.com.